Welcome to another exciting lesson of AP Statistics. I'm your host, Mr. Z, and today I'll be talking to you about correlation. Now, in class today, I taught you how to make a scatter plot. And in our scatter plot, we compared heights versus wingspans. And we talked about the three things that you should discuss when describing a scatter plot. And that was form, direction, and strength. And some students asked me how to tell how strong the data is. And I kind of told them to hold off on that question because I knew that in this video on correlation, you'd be able to much uh, better answer that question. So correlation measures the direction, whether it's positive or negative, and the strength of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Correlation is usually written as the variable r. So basically, I'm going to teach you how to calculate a number that tells you how strong it is. So it kind of takes some of the guessing out of it. So we have two examples of positive correlation. Okay, In this first example, we have a strong positive correlation. And I like to think about this as a rope. This is a perfect rope. Okay, It's a straight line. It's the strongest of all correlations. As that rope weakens, it becomes frayed and more spread out. That becomes a weaker positive correlation. Okay, so I will draw a simile to a rope with these graphs. Negative correlation. Okay, this is negative. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's still strong, but it's just the data is going down. As x is increasing, the explanatory, the explanatory variable is increasing. Y, the response variable, is decreasing. So again, as my rope becomes a little bit more frayed, a little bit more spread out, it weakens, and I have a weaker negative correlation here. The last example, we have no correlation. Okay, Here's an example of no correlation. The dots are all spread out. For example, if I plotted everybody's GPA with their weight, you can think about it. There's probably not much of a relationship between those two. I don't see much of a pattern. No correlation. Okay, some quick facts about correlation. So again, you should have these copied down in your notes, and I'll just take a quick uh, moment to mention e each one. Correlation makes no distinction between explanatory and response variables. Correlation is not causation. So that's to say, just because there's a relationship between the two doesn't mean that one causes the other. One affects the other. And we'll get into more examples with that. Correlation requires that both variables be quantitative. You have no categorical data here. A positive R indicates a positive association between the variables, and a negative R indicates a negative association. So that makes it nice. Just by the sign of the number tells me whether the graph is positive or negative. OK. Correlation R is always a number between negative 1 and 1. If R equals 0, it indicates no correlation. The closer to negative 1 or 1, indicates a stronger correlation. Correlations of 1 and negative 1 indicate perfect linear relationships. So if you want to think about it like this, on the far left end of the scale, okay, we have negative 1. Okay, the data becomes more spread out. We have like negative 0.5. Okay, no correlation. Then it starts again in the positive direction. Okay, We kind of have a correlation of 0.5. And then we have a perfect line, which is 1. So there's kind of your spectrum of correlations. OK, next. Uh, correlation measures the strength of linear relationships only. If the data is curved, or there's some curved pattern, correlation won't help you. Like the mean and standard deviation, the correlation is not resistant. It is strongly affected by a few outlying observations. Use R with caution when outliers appear in the scatter plot. Think of the T-Rex effect. You got a really tall dinosaur with really short arms. All right, that's an outlier. That's going to that's going to change your correlation. Okay. Now, let's talk about that number. In this first example, all right, we have clearly a positive line, and that's a straight line. So if it's a straight line, that's a perfect positive linear correlation. That's r equals 1. Okay. Now, as my rope becomes frayed, it weakens. In the second example, it's still positive, and it's strong, but it's not perfect. So we just call this a strong positive linear correlation. That's r equals 0.9. And again, 
in the next example, the dots become more spread out. So we call that a weak positive linear correlation. That's r equals 0.4. So you can see that number getting closer to zero. Now we go to the negative side of things. We have a straight line that's negative. So it has a perfect negative linear correlation. r equals negative 1. OK, next examples. So here we have some other examples. Again, we've got this line, or linear, it's not a line anymore, but a linear pattern that's negative, still pretty strong. So we're going to call that a strong negative linear correlation. That's an R of negative 0.9, okay? Close to 1, but negative. The next pattern, the dots again continue to get more spread out. That rope continues to fray. So I'm going to call that a weak negative correlation. R equals negative 0.4. The last two examples, we've got some kind of random graphs. This is that GPA versus weight graph. There's no, there's no correlation here. There's no relationship. So that's going to have an R close to 0. Okay? And in this last one, even though that pattern is pretty uh, close together, it's a curved pattern. So it is also going to have an R close to 0. Okay, on this last slide, basically I have a, a little matching. All right, I've got six graphs and six correlations. What I want you to do is I want you to uh, copy them down, sketch, and then try to match which one has each correlation. So go ahead, pause it, try it, and then you can check it with the answers that I'm about to show. Okay, so here are your answers. This first top left graph here has no real correlation, so I'm going to say that it's an R of 0. Okay, there's really not much of a pattern here. The second one down, it appears to be going up or positive, but it's very frayed. So I'm going to pick 0.5 for that one, positive 0.5. Uh, the bottom left is linear, close together, but not a straight line. So I'm going to go with a correlation of 0.9, positive 0.9. Uh, the top right graph here appears to be going down, but in a very spread out pattern. So I would pick negative 0.3 for that one. Uh, and then the next graph, again, it's negative, linear. Uh, not real close together, though, so I'm going to pick a 0.7. And then the last one, you can see that that's a very tight rope. It's going down. It's negative. It's very close to 1. I'm going to give that about a correlation of negative 0.99. Okay, so hopefully now you have a, a little bit better idea of how to determine just how strong a scatter plot is.